Today is a how-to video on painting a baby bass pattern crankbait. I've already painted our square bill, uh, a white base coat. Um, all your lures should be painted with, uh, with a base coat. Some paints won't cover very well over the clear plastic body, so uh, an opaque white is a good place to start. Now for the baby bass pattern, uh, the first color we're going to spray will be um, a pearlized gold and that will be on the t basically the top half of the lure and uh, you're probably wondering why gold when everything is green but you'll see how later the green colors will blend very well with the gold I'm just painting the top half of the lure because the belly will be white. And we will heat set this now. Probably can take a few coats for the uh, for the gold to really uh, to really apply on the lure nicely. Let's heat set that. And I'll do another coat. Next yeah, color is going to be a uh, an opaque lime green, and I reduce that by half with uh, Auto Air um, 4010 reducer, and that should make it thin enough that it'll blend very well with the uh, with the gold we just sprayed. I reduce the air pressure to about 20 psi, and uh, here we go. And it gives the lime green a pearlized color green when you spray over the gold. Reducing opaque paint will actually turn it more into a transparent paint, which is what we want so the gold will come through a little bit in this green color. Okay, we'll heat set this and go on to the next, the next color. will be a transparent May green. And I like the Comart paints because they're pretty much ready to shoot right out of the bottle, especially the transparents. 
uh, the opaque paints, I usually reduce them a bit uh, so they flow better out of the airbrush. So transparent may green will do that more on the top half of the bait, and I reduce the pressure again down to about 20 psi, 15 to 20 psi. Don't completely cover the lime green we did earlier, so there's some transition to the colors. And even though we painted over the gold, the remnants of the gold still shines through the two layers of paint to give that pearlized effect. I'm going to do a layer of uh, transparent forest green, and that will be just on the top half of the body, darken it up a little bit. Okay, I like to add a, uh, a little bit of a scale effect, and what I did is I have like one of those shower sponges, some people call it a loofah, and I cut a small piece and I use these alligator clips to hold it down. And uh, I'm going to spray a little bit of black on the back, and when I pull it off, the green will actually be the outline of the scale pattern. I'm just going to do uh, a little bit on the back. Some of the overspray will go down the sides, which was exactly what I want. I'm just going to heat set this so I don't want the, uh, the paint to pool. And we'll take off the masking. There's our scale effect, and we can tone that down a little bit by painting just a little bit more black. I don't need the scales to really pop as much as they are. When you're spraying with your airbrush, don't start spraying right on the lure. Start off so you don't get a pooling effect. 
Nice even strokes. We'll heat set that and we'll put the uh, bass pattern on the sides of the bottom. Okay, now we're going to add the, the black uh, bass pattern on the side of the body. And <clears throat> that is achieved with stencils, which I purchased online. Um, the only problem with these is they're flat. The body here is contoured. So recently I've been making my own stencils uh, using a vacuum forming box and uh, that takes the shape of the lure and uh, I will show that uh, in another video. Today we're going to use these stencils and I still have the black in the airbrush and I'm going to line these up ever so carefully. Hold it against the lure as well as I can. And don't overdo it with the black. There we go. Heat set that really quick. I mean, I probably could have even lined that up better so the taper of the pattern comes up here to the tail. Flip this around. And we'll do the other side. There you go. Really don't need a lot. And also, what I like to do is darken up right about here around the eyes and the nose area. And I lower the air pressure again. About 20 psi, 15 psi. Just a little bit of paint around the eyes. And the nose. Let's flip that around. And there we go. I'll heat set, heat set that, and then we will come in and do still like an orange throat, and that just helps uh, making the, the bait more attractive. Okay, now we're going to add the, uh, the throat pattern here. And some people use orange or red. Uh, I want to go just with a little darker color, a transparent burnt orange. And you don't want to overdo it here either. I'm going to turn the pressure down. Sometimes you have more control over the brush and the paint with lower air pressure, especially if your paints are thinner. That's really all you need. I'll heat set that, and pretty much the lure is done. Next, we're gonna do and eyes. We're gonna and put on the the eyes. I have an assortment of eyes uh, that I use depending on the uh, the lure pattern I'm doing. I have these uh, somewhat clear eyes with a little bit of orange in there. Also have some chartreuse color that may look okay too. We got some blue eyes, probably not today. 
and red eyes. Eh, that may work, but I'm not going to use those today. I'll use these, uh, uh, these clearer eyes. And I just got to get them off the paper here. I've already taken the tape off the uh, the bill. These eyes are self-adhesive, so just push down on them a little bit. They'll stick, and then the clear coat will seal them in. Okay, let's grab one more eye. The eyes really bring the lure to life. Okay, now my clear coat, I use DevCon's two-ton epoxy and it's got about a 30 minute working time, but realistically, maybe 10 minutes before it gets a little thick and stringy. And uh, I ordered this online at uh, on Amazon. They seem to have the best price. All right, so I took a little Dixie cup, cut it in half, so I have a little better access to the to the epoxy. Here's the tube here, and you really don't need much. Okay. And I have one of those cocktail stirs I got at Target to mix up my epoxy. Mix it up for about 30 seconds or so. Okay, I'm going to squeeze out some of the bubbles. Okay, now you have kind of a milky consistency. <clears throat> I have a kid's disposable paintbrush, and here we go. You'll see as you clear coat, the colors will really start to pop. You can see more of the gold now start to come through. even strokes. This lure body has some scale texture here so make sure you, you get the epoxy in there. Having a good work light helps too, so you can see if, uh, if you're going to miss any spots. I have a small uh, desk lamp that has uh, a, bu a bunch of LEDs. It's like a light bar. I've tried a few other ones and this seems to be the best to illuminate the work area. Nice long even strokes. That'll help work out some of the air bubbles if you have any. Don't 
forget the back here. And get it in the eye there. see the colors really come out nice when you clear coat. Okay, we'll do a once over in the light, make sure we covered everything. We didn't miss any spots. some of these bubbles here on the nose. And we'll call that complete. Some people put their lures on a drying wheel so the epoxy or the clear coat doesn't pool up. Um, I usually let them sit here. I haven't had too bad of a problem with anything pooling. So there's the finished product. That's a 2.5 square bill in a baby bass pattern.